A big part of mold making, one that often gets little attention, is building the mold box. Now, why is this so important? Well, in order to prevent our mold material from leaking or spilling, we need to contain it properly. And that's where the mold boxes come in. Now, today we will cover what a mold box is, the different materials you can use to build one, and the pros and the cons of each option. Now, a mold box is simply a containment field built around the original model that you're going to mold. You can make one from a variety of materials. Just keep in mind that you don't want your mold box to bond with the molding material. Some of the common tools that you're going to need to build a mold box are hot melt glue, oil-based clay, a razor knife, a saw, and a drill. Let's start with some of the most commonly used materials, wood and melamine boards. Now, these are easy to find at any hardware or craft store, relatively inexpensive and something most DIYers may already have on hand. Now, melamine board has a sealed and smooth surface that doesn't need to be sealed, while wood and plywood are porous, which means you do need to seal those surfaces before pouring your mold. A common technique is building L-shaped sections that can be quickly assembled into mold boxes of different sizes. You can find sealing recommendations in the FAQ section on our website. Next up, foam core and poster board. Now, both are inexpensive and available at most craft or office supply stores. They'll work well for both simple block molds or irregular shapes. They're easy to cut and shape so that you won't need any power tools to work with them. Simply score the material and fold it over. However, if you are using a polyurethane rubber, you will need to seal the surface and apply a release agent before pouring the molding products. Now, these foam core boards are available in different thicknesses, so some of them are harder and sturdier, while the thinner ones are easier to manipulate and much softer. You can use that as a benefit when you're building your own mold box. Plastic boards and plexiglass. Now, plastic boards and plexiglass are more expensive and can be trickier to cut, but they do offer a smooth sealed surface that only requires a release agent when using polyurethane rubber for your mold. Also, if using a clear acrylic like plexiglass, it allows you to see the material inside your pore, which can help by monitoring the air bubbles trap and the fill levels of your mold. When using plastic boards like this, it allows us to create these L-shaped designs that allow us then to create any size molds very quickly and efficiently in a short period of time. Aluminum shim. For more organic and irregular shapes, aluminum flashing is a great choice. This is a flexible roofing and construction material that has found its way into the mold making industry. Now, this material is easy to cut and shape. It's very inexpensive and creates a non-porous surface that just needs a release agent when working with polyurethane rubber. The material is easy to shape into almost any organic shape and with a little bit of force, it will retain the shape that you put it in. Oil-based clay. Oil-based clay is another very useful material for mold makers. While high-end quality oil clays are used for sculpting, general purpose oil clay like the Sculptex work great for building organic shaped mold boxes or for sealing of the seam lines on mold boxes. Now, since this material is non-porous, you typically don't need a sealer or release agent, but applying a release agent will make the removal of the clay much easier when utilizing polyurethane rubber. Ready-made containers. Sometimes mold makers will repurpose existing containers and use them as mold boxes. A plastic deli cup, such as this one, a lunch box or container, a bucket like this one right here, can all be quickly 
cut down to size, glue down, and create a non-porous, ready-to-go mold box. Being creative will let you scale down the original container down to the size, better fitting your application and furthermore saving you money. Just remember, if you're using a polyurethane rubber, applying a release agent to the inside surface of these containers is really important. Otherwise, they will stick. Cutting down a five gallon bucket will let you quickly create a round mold box that can easily be fitted to the original model. Of course, there are many ways to make a mold box and there's really not a single right way to do it as long as it holds the material and gets the job done. And if you're ever unsure, it's always a good idea to run a small test first or reach out to someone with more experience for advice. Now, do you have a preferred method from the ones that we've shown here? Is there one that we didn't cover here? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Now, for more mold making tips, techniques, and projects, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for our latest videos.